I'm happy that David Greenberg is here, and uh, he will be talking to us. Uh, uh, he comes from Israel, uh, from a very well-known uh, group of Ron Dagan and uh, uh, David Greenberg, and he's going to talk to us about uh, the management of uh, community-acquired pneumonia. So, David. Good morning, and thank you for coming uh, for this session, and I'll talk about management of community-acquired pneumonia. Uh, these are my uh, disclosures. Uh, I will talk about uh, the burden of community-acquired pneumonia in children, the etiology of community-acquired pneumonia, treatment recommendations, and then protection and risk factors for community-acquired pneumonia in children, prevention, focusing on the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, and prevention of respiratory viruses such as RSV and influenza. So as we all know, pneumonia is, in children, the leading cause of morbidity and mortality. It is estimated that uh, 156 million cases of pneumonia uh, occur each year in children less than five years of age with almost two million cases of death uh, each year, which is 28% uh, of all causes of death in children less than uh, five years of age. So what are the etiologies for uh, community-acquired pneumonia in children? And uh, mainly I'll focus on uh, the co-infection of viral and bacterial. So it is well established that pneumococcus is the most common uh, cause of uh, pneumonia. In this study, you can see that 60% of all bacterial causes are related to pneumococcus followed by Haemophilus influenza and others. And the most common serotypes are listed here, 1, 3, 5, 7, A, 14, and 19A, all in red are belong uh, or include in the 13 valent uh, vaccine. And uh, in complicated pneumonia, uh, uh, pleuropneumonia and others, you can see that these uh, serotypes are the most uh, common uh, uh, causes. This is a recently study that uh, look on uh, all causes of pneumonia. You can see here in gray, and uh, in brown you can see the pneumococcal pneumonia. However, if you look carefully uh, in the green uh, bars, you can see the RSV and the involvement of RSV virus in uh, pneumonia in children less than two years of age. This is not similar to adults because when you look in adults uh, more than 65 years of age, you can see that influenza is actually the most common virus involved in uh, pneumococcal pneumonia and uh, generally in community acquired pneumonia. This is a recent study across Europe. It's a consortium that uh, involves uh, nine uh, countries uh, across Europe, and uh, we look for uh, cases of uh, community acquired pneumonia in children less than five years of age and we look for viral causes. Uh, in this study, we include 359 uh, cases, and you can see here that in 72% of all cases, we were able to find a virus, and we were able to find uh, in 22.8% a co-infection of more than one virus. These are the countries that uh, involved uh, in the first year of the study, and you can see that each, in each country, we, you can see the amount of cases with viral infection, and uh, here in the brown uh, bars you can see the cases with more than one virus in, in each country. What are the most common viruses that we found uh, across Europe? You can see here rhinovirus is by far the most common, followed by RSV, and then Boca virus, in, uh, and influenza virus, and uh, metanervo, metanervirus, and other viruses as well. Uh, viruses are, and the etiology of viruses and bacteria are, depend on age. Here you can see on the uh, orange bars, children less than two years of age. Uh, here, children two to five years of age. And in the green bar, children more than five years of age. And you can see that the viral etiology is mainly common in the first uh, two years of life, and then it's reduced by age. And the bacterial uh, causes are increasing uh, by age. However, the most probably important is the co-infection in one-third of the cases of bacterial and viral etiologies together. When we talk pneumonia, we are talking properly in different languages, and even the WHO has different definitions for pneumonia. Uh, there are clinical definitions for pneumonia that people are using for their studies, and there are also a 
X-ray definitions for pneumonia, and this is the pneumonia that uh, previously uh, Professor Noenek uh, uh, represent uh, dealing with uh, the efficacy of the pneumococcal vaccine trials with an endpoint of pneumonia. So when I'll talk on pneumonia, I'll refer to this uh, definition as well most of the time. Recently, there were two uh, recommendations published by uh, two different uh, societies. One is the British Thoracic Society guidelines that published a couple, uh, two months ago. And they stated that streptococcus pneumonia is the most common bacterial cause of pneumonia in children. And streptococcus pneumonia causes about one third of all geographic confirmed pneumonia in children less than two years of age. Pneumonia caused by group A strep and staph aureus are most likely than pneumococcus to progress to the pediatric intensive care unit uh, admissions and MPMA. And they also uh, stated that the overall viruses account to a significant amount of uh, cases in children, mainly uh, uh, under the age of uh, one year. And one third of all cases are represent a mixed infection of uh, a viral and bacterial. And mycoplasma is something uh, sh that should be considered in children age one to five years of age. And uh, they stated that uh, age is a good predictor uh, for the likelihood of pathogens, uh, meaning that uh, mainly children less than two years of age are more likely to have viral infection and children above uh, two years of age are more likely to have bacterial infection as we saw previously. So having this in mind, we have to think about what is the treatment recommendations and option that we have. And this is coming to a different guidelines coming in uh, last August from uh, the uh, uh, IDSA guidelines, uh, Management of Community Acquired Pneumonia in Children. Uh, please note that these recommendations are in children three months of age and above. And their, recomm their recommendations are different for children less than five years of age or above, and you can see that basically they recommend for oral treatment amoxicillin. Uh, by the way, they recommend 90 milligram per kilogram uh, twice a, a day. And they also recommend as a treatment, a second treatment or a treatment of choice, a macrolide, uh, mainly azithromycin. And in the influenza season, uh, the recommendation are to use uh, anti-influenza uh, 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 drugs. They also separated by a, a either a, by the a vaccination status. So if the child was fully immunized for pneumococcus or for amorphous influenza, for hospitalized children, they recommend a ampicillin or penicillin as a drug of choice. However, if the child was not fully immunized, they recommend a treatment with third generation cephalosporin as the first drug of choice. Again, following with the recommendation for uh, macrolides. The British British uh, Toxic Society, uh, they stated that antibiotic administration orally are safe and effective for children presenting with uh, even severe community-acquired pneumonia. Uh, intravenous treatment in, is only recommended for children that cannot uh, tolerate oral treatment or for septicemic or complicated pneumonia cases. And their recommendation are also amoxicillin, but also comoxiclav, cefuroxim, or third-generation cephalosporins. So if we try to put together the two recommendations, so the British Society recommendations are that bacterial pneumonia should be considered in children when there is a persistent or repetitive fever of more than 38.5 centigrade with respiratory symptoms. All children with a clear clinical diagnosis of pneumonia should be receive antibiotic treatment because you cannot differentiate between viral and bacterial infection. However, in children less than two years of age, uh, because uh, in most of the cases, mainly with mild symptoms, are uh, viral uh, related, they don't recommend uh, using treatment. These are a little bit different than the American recommendation that actually stated that antimicrobial therapy is not routinely required for preschool children uh, with community acquired pneumonia because of the viral uh, pathogen are responsible for the great majority of cases. However, both recommend Amoxicillin is the first drug of choice in uh, children if we decide to treat with antibiotics. So as a clinician have a problem. We have uh, the definition of clinical pneumonia. 
We have less cases of clinical pneumonia with abnormal chest X-ray. We have even less cases with alveolar pneumonia, and we even have less cases of alveolar pneumonia with blood culture positive for uh, our pathogen like a pneumococcus. And we have to decide wherever we are, we are and what uh, information we have, which are the bacterial pneumonia. And this is also coming to a, when we are looking for studies with a definition of pneumonia, uh, and mainly bacterial uh, pneumonia, uh, looking for uh, treatment recommendations. So moving from the uh, antibiotic treatment to protection and prevention. The WHO uh, have a risk factor related to host and environmental uh, that affect community acquired pneumonia. There are definite risk factors such as malnutrition, low birth weight, non-exclusive breastfeeding, lack of measles immunization, and indoor air pollution and crowding. There are also likely risk factors such as parental smoking, zinc deficiency, mother experience as a caregiver, and concomitant diseases such as diarrhea. And also there is a list of possible risk factors such as mother education, daycare center, etc. This is a, just one of the examples. These are children that admitted uh, to the hospital with, alveolar, with a lower respiratory tract infection or to the intensive care unit. And you can see here that the level of vitamin D was significantly lower in children that admitted to an uh, intensive care unit compared to other groups. We also did a study looking for a passive smoking exposure in children, and we look for carriage of pneumococcus, and you can see here that children that exposed to passive smoking had significantly higher carriage of a streptococcus pneumonia in their nasopharynx, but not only in their nasopharynx, also in the oropharynx, so they carried more in the oropharynx pneumococcus than children that were not exposed to smoking, and when we look for the serotypes, they carried more serotypes that are included in the seven valent vaccines. So what is the effect of the seven valent vaccine on pneumonia? In the post-license insurance uh, data from the states, you can see here that 39% uh, reduction in uh, all causes of uh, pneumonia were found, and they uh, calculate more than 40,000 cases that were reduced uh, in children less than two years of age. This was also found in uh, Poland and in uh, Italy. And uh, this is a recent data from Uruguay demonstrating also reduction in MPM cases. This is a, also a, a slide that you saw previously that uh, look for the pneumococcal efficacy against what we call viral pneumonia, demonstrating reduction in viral pneumonia caused by these viruses in children that vaccinate for pneumococcus. So uh, they were able to show a 33 reduction in all pneumonia, viral pneumonia cases demonstrating the co-infection of viral and bacterial. Uh, just one slide on influenza vaccines. Uh, just uh, to uh, uh, remind everybody the life attenuated vaccine, these are different studies looking on the uh, efficacy of the life attenuated vaccine versus the uh, non-life attenuated vaccine in children less than uh, between 6 to 18 years of age. And you can see in different studies that this life attenuated vaccine had a higher efficacy in this age group. Uh, we have also the RSV immunoglobulin, and this is a very old study, well known, that demonstrates reduction of 55% in RSV hospitalization in vaccinated children versus uh, controls. So just if we look on the premature uh, babies, you all uh, can understand the uh, prematurity of the uh, lung uh, function and also the immune system that is uh, 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 not uh, mature enough, and we, if we are looking on the pathogenesis, these are the viruses, and this is the pneumococcus that just stay in uh, more than 60% of children uh, in the nasopharynx and just wait for the uh, RSV or other viruses to cause the inflammation and the infection, and then the pneumococcus can spread into the lung to cause the infection. So... Uh, <coughs> If we are focus, focusing on the major pathogen in pneumonia in children, Streptococcus pneumonia uh, is the major pathogen, and uh, its uh, pneumonia cases were reduced by the PCV7, and the new PCV vaccines pr uh, probably uh, provide broader uh, coverage uh, for this uh, disease. Uh, usage of the influenza vaccine and RSV uh, immunoprophylaxis can increase this uh, uh, prevention and uh, uh, prevent more cases. 
the uh, most appropriate antibiotic treatment for community acquired pneumonia is amoxicillin, or if you want to use an uh, intravenous, uh, ampicillin or penicillin are the drugs of choice. In a special setting, uh, for example, in mycoplasma or bordatella pertussis, macrolide uh, should be used. And in cases of staph arrows, uh, this treatment should be uh, adjusted for this uh, uh, organism. And uh, in unimmunized ch uh, children, uh, we should uh, use extended uh, antibiot antibiotics. So in conclusion, strategies pro for prevention of community acquired pneumonia should include improved nutrition, environmental prevention and measurement like reduction in exposure to passive smoking, ad uh, adequate antibiotic treatment, vaccines for bacteria such as pneumococcus and hemophilus influenza and pertussis, and uh, for viruses like influenza and RSV immunoglobulin. So I just close here by uh, just uh, re reminding everybody the huge work is that is being done all over the world. Uh, just two weeks ago, we had the, the World Pneumonia Day, and uh, there's a lot of activities going on to prevent uh, this uh, disease. Thank you very much.